Uh, I'm Heather Elliott. I am the project lead for the Working Better with Age um, uh, initiative, and I'm actually new to this project, probably about two and a half weeks. Uh, this presentation is probably a bit long, so I'm going to ask our facilitator, we can go through it fairly quickly. Um, the takeaway is easier to surmise, um, articulate it back to you. Uh, so the St. John's Board of Trade uh, is looking at um, uh, a question. What are the barriers and opportunities to work for workforce participation for older workers in Newfoundland and Labrador? And the working title has been um, older workers and uh, we're transitioning that. So you may say may see working better with age or you may see older workers presentation. Next slide, please. Um, so this is a research on barriers and opportunities. Uh, it's led by the St. John's Board of Trade and funded by um, NL WIC. Next slide. Uh, so in the way forward on workforce development, the government of Newfoundland and Labrador identified older workers age 55 as a key demographic to help offset labor shortages in the province. So in the fall of 2019, the St. John's Board of Trade undertook a research and opportunities initiative um, to identify what barriers older workers age 55 faced in retaining or seeking employment. Um, next slide. So the first phase of the project was to conduct research into those barriers. Next slide. And uh, MQL was hired to do that. Uh, they were asked to identify what the potential labor, labor pool was um, and what were the barriers and what were the opportunities. Next slide. Uh, so they came back and they delivered two research reports. One was called Working Better with Age and the other was uh, looking at hiring practices, attitudes and perceptions of hiring older workers within the workplace. And they answered the question on the labor market, the, lab the, the population number. Next slide. So they're saying now basically that it would be potentially between 43,000 and 50,000 potential workers that would be eligible to enter the workforce who would self-identify as being over the age of 55. Um, and so what is an older worker? I mean, 55, I'm over 55. So do I consider myself an older worker? Possibly. Um, but I think we're, you know, we're looking at this in terms of um, uh, 55 plus to 70. So, um, uh, you know, there's some opportunity there for a, um, a lot of really good uh, research over a broad spectrum of persons over the age of 55. Next slide. Um, so the key barriers for older workers uh, have been identified through this initial research with MQO as being age discrimination. And um, interestingly for me, when I think of age discrimination within a diversity and inclusion um, framework, uh, uh, I see it as one of the pivotal parts of moving this agenda forward. Um, and um, if we if we look at diversity statements, and even in the conversation that we've had today, many of the identifiers within diversity for the presentations when people talk about diverse populations, they talk about women, indigenous peoples, and new Canadians. Rarely do we talk about persons that are older over the age of 55 as being part of that diverse workforce. And it's a really interesting place to start because um, we've done some really, really good work on diversity and inclusion and equity for many different, on many different, uh, for many uh, different populations of people who are underrepresented. Imagine if we were to take the idea of a population over the age of 55, the older worker, and elevate it to that level of a conversation. I think we would open it up like a blossom on a on a flower. Um, the other, the other, uh, uh, the other, the second of the four barriers uh, were, was skill mismatch and technological advancement, digital literacy. I don't know if you have to be 55 and over to have a to be challenged with digital literacy. Um, you know, iPhones can be tricky for 18 year olds, 28 year olds and 78 year olds, but it's an area that we have to look at. Next slide, please. 
workplace inflexibility. Um, COVID taught us a lot. And, uh, um, you know, the idea that we're, um, that we're doing team meetings of this size and caliber, you know, for many locations across the island, two years ago, you couldn't really think of it. You couldn't think of having a meeting in those terms. And two years ago, if you were looking at an aging workforce and, and within that population of mature professionals who would say, I don't really want to work from an office under fluorescent lights with no windows, you know, five days a week, nine hours a day, I would prefer to do some work from home. We would have seen those folks as being outliers or people who had had a different perspective. But today, you know, it's it's just part of the, the natural mindset of how to be productive. So workforce and flexibility, I think we need to look at that a little bit more in terms of how we see that as a barrier. And in lack of employment services tailored to older workers, um, Serena's Hopkins presentation uh, from the Canadian Career Development Foundation uh, within Prime, I would love to explore this conversation because I think that the idea of how we employ people, the process, like, um, you know, if you go to a Canada Post website, if you're uploading all of this information, but there's four or five documents. Um, and, you know, what are the key phrases that Canada Post looks for when they're looking for candidates for mail carriers or letter sorters or in management? Um, you know, there there's a nuance to um, the idea of being over the age of 55 when you graduated from university, like the date, the date tells everything. So, you know, how do these how do these systems work? What are the best ways to work through them so that we the, if there is a preset bias toward that demographic, that it doesn't end up um, putting a, a business of potential employer, employer off or a candidate from applying because they don't feel confident. And so the um, uh, within the employer survey, actually, we could we could um, we could go. Uh, sort of quickly through these slides, because what was really interesting too about the, the, the NQO survey results from the employer survey was that uh, when they were asked about hiring practices for um, persons over the age of 55, it was kind of a non-starter. Like most of the, the, um, the report that came back said that employers would say things like, we can go to the next slide. Um, there were a total of 86 companies. We can go to the next slide um, and uh, and to the next slide. Um, most of the employers said that 75% of workplaces had at least one older worker employed. 30% said they had hired an older worker in 12 months. Most said that older workers are more experienced. 86, 82% agreed that uh, experience was more important than education when hiring, but yet, um, they they didn't see older workers as being a standout or as part of a diversity conversation. It was sort of a non-starter. And, and actually kind of being a non-starter, sort of a non-event, is almost um, is, is a bit more challenging because not really acknowledging or paying attention or understanding what the demographic can bring into the labor uh, skill, labor pool, is really what the barrier is. Um, Next slide. So we're going to, um, we're going NQO, uh, uh, we're going back to do more research. We're going to build a pilot um, using the Board of Trade job site portal. We're going to be curating a number of businesses from the roster within the St. John's Board of Trade, the, Clar the Cornerbrook Chamber of Commerce and Happy Valley Goose Bay to get a broad spectrum across the island. We're going to enlist executive search recruitment specialists and we're going to work to try to find a way to build a, a template uh, where we can bring together older workers and um, businesses and get some key findings from that.